The royal court announced today that His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa will head to the Republic of Turkey tomorrow, Thursday, on an official visit, according to an invitation from the Turkish President Recep Tayyip Erdogan. During the visit, His Majesty will hold talks on the historic deep-rooted bilateral relations and ways of further boosting them in all fields, in addition to reviewing regional and international updates and issues of common concern. The visit of His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa to Turkey comes in line with the solid relations between the two countries. It reflects both sides' keen interest to consolidate mutual relations and develop joint coordination in different fields. The historic trade relationships between Bahrain and Turkey has continually been expanding and developing, being evident in the climbing volumes of trade between the two countries and the numerous bilateral agreements and MOUs as part of the Bahraini-Turkish strategic partnership. We have deep-rooted relations with Bahrain uh, based on our joint history. Uh, but our diplomatic relations were established in 1973. Uh, this does not mean that uh, our relations began uh, at the beginning of 70s, uh, but only from that, that date onwards, our relations just uh, uh, turned into to, into another dimension. I have a picture in my room uh, showing a, a presidential visit from uh, Turkey at the beginning of uh, uh, 50s from Turkey to Bahrain. Our uh, late president Celal Bayar visited Bahrain at that time. Uh, you know. Visits at that level is considered as state visits. So uh, Turkey always valued Bahrain, and uh, even before its independence, uh, it uh, valued Bahrain as an independent country. Uh, so uh, certainly we have stable and strong relations since then, and we are trying to further develop uh, these relations uh, in all fields. The Kingdom of Bahrain has many honorable stances toward Turkey, especially supporting the country's legitimacy during the recent coup attempt. We had been through uh, many unfortunate events uh, in Turkey uh, lately. Uh, time to time we faced uh, terror attacks by PKK and Daesh terror organizations. Most unfortunately, and it caused a lot of casualties uh, from my nation. Uh, but the biggest threat so far was the latest coup attempt of the 15th July. And as any country, any nation would expect, we just wanted to see our friends uh, standing by our sides. And Bahrain was one of those countries uh, standing by us. Uh, that's why Bahrain is so important for us. If anybody asks my personal opinion, I'm saying that uh, since then Bahrain is as big as world for me. Uh, with the support it extended to my nation and to my country. I'm personally grateful. Our nation is grateful. Our government is grateful. His Majesty the King's visit reflects mutual supportive stances towards all procedures taken by the two countries in order to combat all forms of terrorism, as well as maintain regional security and stability. The visit will further contribute to enhancing joint cooperation in all fields, especially in regards to tourism, economy and trade. Along the domain of His Majesty the King's visit to Turkey, the Minister of Information Affairs Authority, Mr. Ali Rumehi, lauded the visit by His Majesty the King to the Republic of Turkey as it is considered an important step towards enhancing the historic and strategic relations between the two countries, which is based on brotherhood, mutual respect, same religion, and the keenness for the Gulf region and rejection of foreign interference in the internal affairs of countries. In a statement to the Andalou News Agency, Rumehi added that the Bahrain-Turkish relations have made a positive step as a result of His Majesty's visit to Turkey in 2008 and its impact on the relations in political, economic, cultural and security fields. The Minister of Information voiced pride in Turkey's stance towards Bahrain and the Gulf stability and its support for the democratic march in the kingdom, as well as rejecting interference in Bahrain's internal affairs. Rumehi also made reference to the stances of Bahrain's and the Gulf towards the security and stability of Turkey under the leadership of President Erdogan. He affirmed the importance of visits in consolidating relations between the two countries and activating agreements including economic, industrial, technical, investment, security, education, and culture agreements, which were signed during His Majesty's visit to Turkey in 2008. The minister also highlighted the importance of Gulf-Turkish cooperation and coordination in the various fields. 
He also pointed out to the possible and available opportunities for enhancing the economy and trade between Manama and Ankara. Ramehi added that Turkey is one of the preferred tourist destinations for Bahrainis and voiced pride in the contribution of the Turkish community in Bahrain's development march. Ramehi concluded that the visit by His Majesty the King to Ankara will represent a strong boost towards the brotherly relations between the two countries due to the keen desire of both sides to consolidate strategic economic partnership, combat terrorism, and ensure regional and international security and peace, which falls in line with the common interests of the two countries and their people. His Royal Highness the Prime Minister Prince Khalifa bin Salman Al Khalifa issued Edict 39 for 2016, amending the list of narcotic and psychotropic substances of Law 15 for 2007. The amendment included adding the substances of synthetic cannabinoids, the cathinon, tramadil, ketamine, and APAAN, or also known as alpha phenylacetoacetonitrile. His Royal Highness also issued Edict 40, appointing Ali Abdel Nabi Marhun as Director of Companies Monitoring at the Ministry of Industry, Commerce and Tourism. He also issued Edict 41, transferring the Director of Social Programs and Affairs of the Southern Governorate, Sheikh Amnira bint Mohammed Al Khalifa, to be Director of the Youth Activities at the Ministry of Youth and Sports Affairs. The edict also appointed at the same ministry, Nawar Abdel Mutawa as Director of Youth Centers, Mohammed Abdul Rahman Boali as Director of Human and Financial Resources, Saleh Naji Al Rahman as Director of Facilities and Projects, and Tariq Hassan Al Arabi as Director of Clubs Affairs. His Royal Highness the Crown Prince, Deputy Supreme Commander, and First Deputy Prime Minister Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa received today at Rafah Palace, Bahrain Central Bank's Governor Rashid Al Maraj, and members of the Board of Directors of the CBB to present the first gold medal issued by the bank on the occasion of the 50th anniversary of issuing the Bahraini dinar. His Royal Highness lauded the bank's economic infrastructure and its economic and financial policies, which allows the kingdom to effectively cope with changes and face challenges. He also said the stability of the Bahraini dinar affirms the Bahraini economy's capability to improve further, pointing out that it is one of the factors that enhances the country's gains in a sustainable development. His Royal Highness praised the banking and financial sector and said that it's one of the best banking systems in the region, stressing the importance of further developing the sector. He hailed the role of the CBB in achieving the highest level of quality and their contributions to strengthening the kingdom's economy and achieving prosperity. The CBB governor and members expressed thanks and appreciation to His Royal Highness's keenness to improve the banking and financial sector, affirming their willingness to work on implementing the plans and strategies that will further help improve the sector. His Royal Highness the Crown Prince, Deputy Supreme Commander and First Deputy Prime Minister Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa met today at Rafah Palace the newly appointed Yemeni Ambassador to Bahrain, Dr. Ali Hassan Al Ahmadi. The Crown Prince affirmed that the strong relations that bind the two countries pushes to preserve Yemen's security and stability and restore its development so as to bring prosperity to Yemen and its people. His Royal Highness pointed out that Bahrain's participation in the Saudi-led Arab coalition comes under the instructions of His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa in order to restore legitimacy, security and stability to the brotherly Republic of Yemen. He noted the efforts of the Arab coalition to provide humanitarian aid to the people of Yemen, stating that it is part of the war against terrorism to preserve the security of the region and the stability of its people. The Crown Prince wished the newly appointed ambassador success in carrying out his duties to strengthen the relations between the two countries. He also wished Yemen peace and process, patronized by the United Nations and support of the Gulf Cooperation Council countries to succeed to benefit the people of Yemen. He pointed out the GCC's goal to reinforce the Council's role as a supporter of peace in Yemen, highlighting what its policy and diplomacy has accomplished in this regard. For his part, Dr. Al Ahmadi expressed thanks and appreciation for His Royal Highness's keenness to restore security and stability to Yemen and its people. He highlighted the major role the Kingdom plays in this field on various aspects, commending the strong bilateral relations and his resolve to further strengthen them. His Royal Highness the Crown Prince, Deputy Supreme Commander and First Deputy Premier Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa received today at Rafah Palace the newly appointed South Korean Ambassador to the Kingdom, Park Ho. 
His Royal Highness highlighted the Kingdom's ambition to deepen bilateral trade and economic relations with countries across Asia, underlining the important role they could play in helping Bahrain achieve its sustainable development goals. He noted that stronger partnerships would help boost the economy, generate economic competitiveness, and attract direct foreign investment. His Royal Highness pointed out the strength of relations and cooperation between Bahrain and South Korea, noting that they had grown steadily over the years through various bilateral visits and agreements, which had facilitated the expansion of trade between the two countries. His Royal Highness the Crown Prince welcomed the newly appointed ambassador and wished him every success in his endeavors, adding that the kingdom was committed to supporting the ambassador and the performance of his diplomatic duties. He said that the constructive relationship between Bahrain and South Korea contributes to the enhancement of bilateral cooperation in the range of fields, including economic and cultural, as well as generating investments which could benefit both countries. The South Korean ambassador, meanwhile, has expressed his gratitude for the opportunity to meet with His Royal Highness and for His Royal Highness's continued support to Bahraini-Korean ties, as well as his desire to enhance bilateral cooperation. Bahrain Defense Force Commander-in-Chief Field Marshal Sheikh Khalifa bin Ahmed Al Khalifa received today the BDF Hajj mission for this year. Present were also the Minister of Defense Affairs, Lieutenant General Yusuf Al Jalahma, and BDF Chief of Staff, Lieutenant General Diab Al Naimi. Field Marshal Sheikh Khalifa conveyed to the mission members the greetings of His Majesty the King and His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and their good wishes in performing the rituals of Hajj. He confirmed the mission embodies the constant care of His Majesty the King to the BDF affiliates as the force has begun sending a group of its staff since 1975 and has continued to do so annually since then. The BDF Commander-in-Chief highlighted the facilities provided by the government of the custodian of the two holy mosques in, in rather easing procedures for all pilgrims. He also wished the leadership, Bahrain and the Arab and Islamic nations, many happy returns on the occasion. The Minister of the Interior, Lt. Gen. Sheikh Rashid bin Abdullah Al Khalifa, chaired today the 10th Civil Defense Council meeting in the presence of the Ministry of Electricity, Works, Municipality Affairs and Urban Planning, Health, Industry, Commerce and Tourism and Information Affairs, as well as the Southern Governor and the Executive President of the Supreme Council for the Environment. The Interior Minister highlighted the importance of the meeting, which comes as part of efforts to protect the safety and security of the public, through coordination and cooperation between public and private organizations. The Council was briefed on steps taken on the implementation of the decision of the last meeting and discussed the topics of the agenda. The Southern Governor affirmed the meeting on the operations of a committee that was formed on May 5th to protect oil and industrial establishments in the Southern Governorate. He highlighted the setting up of a comprehensive five-phase security plan to protect behind oil field and the formation of a civil defense team to deal with emergencies. The governor also discussed a proposal to move the scrapyard away from industrial establishments and residential areas. The council decided to refer the proposal to the cabinet that includes the transformation of the scrapyard to a waste recycle zone. The governor also suggested to allocate the camping area for the upcoming camping season away from dangerous locations. The council also decided to form a work team to set a plan for nuclear security and cooperation with the International Atomic Energy Agency to enhance protection against nuclear threats. The meeting also discussed hiring a specialized company in cooperation with the agency to review the national plan to respond to radiological and nuclear emergencies. The Interior Minister highlighted the importance of enhancing the work of the civil defense in order to tackle existing and developing risks, as well as spreading awareness and dealing with all types of threats, in addition to benefiting from the expertise of developed countries and the formation of a national industrial security authority. At the end of the meeting, the Interior Minister expressed thanks and appreciation to all Council members for their dedication towards enhancing security and safety levels for the public.
The representative of His Majesty the King for Charity Work and Youth Affairs, the President of the Supreme Council for Youth and Sports and Head of the Bahrain Olympic Committee, His Highness Sheikh Nasser bin Hamad Al Khalifa affirmed that the Youth City 2030 is in line with the strategy of the Supreme Council for Youth and Sports and has managed in its seventh version to execute a number of professional programs to educate and train the youth to understand the actual labor market of Bahrain and the need for the youth to acquire skills that the market needs in order to be able to enter the labor market. He highlighted that the Supreme Council for Youth and Sports will always be keen to support the youth city in the coming years, as this comes as part of the Council's beliefs in the importance of such projects and its output results on youth movement in Bahrain under the reign of His Majesty the King. This came during the patronage of His Highness Sheikh Nasser of the concluding ceremony for Youth City 2030, which was organized by Goiz in cooperation with Temkin. A number of ministers and kingdom officials attended the ceremony. Sheikh Nasser pointed out that the success of the activities of the youth city since its launch is attributed to the vision, mission and goals of the project and its stride to follow studies that appropriately identify the needs of the labor market in Bahrain and encourage the youth to participate in its programs that qualify them to enter the labor market. He added that the output of UC this year will be in a professional manner and will be able to enter the labor market. He added that this opportunity will open horizons before the youth to participate in building the present and future of the Kingdom of Bahrain. Sheikh Nasser expressed appreciation to the Ministry of Youth and Sports Affairs for their role in executing the programs. He also recognized the efforts of the administrators and volunteers who contributed in adding success to the project. Sheikh Nasser also lauded the support of Temkin for Youth City. Sheikh Nasser honored Temkin as a strategic partner for the youth city and also the bodies that extend cooperation. He then honored the outstanding students. His Highness Sheikh Nasser was presented with a commemorative gift by the Minister of Youth and Sports Affairs, Mr. Hisham al Jodar. Then His Highness Sheikh Nasser toured the exhibition of the youth city, which put on display youth projects.
The Minister of Foreign Affairs, Sheikh Khalid bin Ahmed bin Mohammed Al Khalifa, met with the Saudi Foreign Minister Adil Jubair in Jeddah today. The two sides reviewed the strong historic relations between the two countries and means of bolstering them. Also discussed were means of enhancing coordination between the two countries, unifying stances towards Arab regional and international issues, as well as consolidating security and stability in the region. The Minister of Foreign Affairs, Sheikh Khalid bin Ahmed bin Mohammed Al Khalifa, met in Jeddah today with the Foreign Minister of the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia, Adil Jubair, and the U.S. Secretary of State, John Kerry, in the presence of the Secretary General of the Gulf Cooperation Council, Dr. Abdel Latif bin Rashid Al Zayani. They discussed ways to reinforce cooperation aspects between the GCC countries and the United States and to move with joint relations to broader prospects, in ex rather in addition to exchanging views on regional issues topped by the situation in the Republic of Yemen. Sheikh Khaled affirmed that the meeting is one of the continuous meetings with the U.S. Secretary of State with the aim of coordinating stances on the latest developments in the region and fostering the best modalities and mechanisms to surmount the challenges it faces. He affirmed the need to put an end to the crises of the region, ensure its stability and work out permanent solutions for its problems, with each country assuming its responsibility towards this end and remaining committed to non-interference in domestic affairs and adhering to international conventions, laws and norms. He also affirmed the Kingdom of Bahrain's support for all the efforts aimed to underpin the security and stability of the region and fulfill the aspirations of its people for development and prosperity.